Now usually, in most of the grocery stores, you find Chinese firm tofu in a tub like this in water, and it usually is already cut into four different quarters or slabs at the tofu factory. But in case you can't find it already cut like that, you can buy the solid block, but be sure it is Chinese firm tofu. If you get the Japanese firm or the soft tofu, it won't press, it'll just crumble. Now if you get a solid block, you just need to cut this into quarters so that it looks like the Chinese firm tofu that's already been cut into quarters. Now be sure to cut the block across the width of the tofu like this and not down the length of it. Now after the quarters are cut, each one of these quarters gets individually wrapped in a piece of cheesecloth. And you just wrap it up like you would a present. Just spread the cheesecloth out, and you want to be sure to completely enclose the whole piece of tofu in the cheesecloth. Just like that. And it's okay if there's a bundle left underneath. Then you want to place it with the wrapped side down so it doesn't come undone. And this gets pressed under about 20 pounds for eight hours or overnight. I've got some back here. Now, I'm fortunate enough to have someone at the house that works out a little bit with weights. So I've got two 10-pound weights right here, pressing this down. But you can always use telephone books or sacks of flour or anything else, just as long as you get approximately 20 pounds and set it on top of a cutting board like this. Now I've set a cutting board here on top of the sink with another cutting board on it because I don't have one of those sinks that has the natural slant that drains down into the sink. The ideal is if you have one of those sinks that slants and the extra water that comes out of the tofu can drain into the sink, you don't need this kind of setup. Now these have been sitting for overnight. You need to let them sit at least eight hours. And I like to do it at nighttime because at nighttime it's much cooler and the tofu won't tend to get a little rotten or kind of slimy. <laughs> if you happen to choose a hot day, and we get a lot of those here in Hawaii, Sometimes the tofu has a tendency to get a little slimy feeling. You just unwrap each one of the pieces. And now you have some pressed tofu. Let me show you the difference in texture. It's quite a bit firmer. And that's why a lot of times in Chinese markets especially, this is either called pressed tofu or, or tofu cheese. Look at the difference, if you can, how easily this one crumbles. And this one doesn't crumble very easily at all. It has to be broken like that. But it slices up very nicely. Now, you <laughs> this is a nice, firm piece of tofu, and it's really gained a lot in nutrition because you've lost a lot of the water, whereas your regular tofu contains between 8 or 11 percent protein per, by weight. Your pressed tofu contains about 22 percent protein, which is about equivalent to beef steak or chicken or fish, except you have no cholesterol or saturated fat. Now these pressed pieces need to be put in some kind of a sauce. I have a sauce started boiling here. And this particular sauce, I'm using a seasoning that is kind of a traditional Chinese seasoning. I've got a, one and a half cups of water in here with a quarter cup of soy sauce and a couple pieces of star anise, which is a spice, and about half a teaspoon each of honey and a half of a teaspoon of Chinese five spice, which you can get in most oriental food stores. 
Now these pieces need to be boiled on, at a very gentle boil for about five minutes. And during that time period, I usually come in and turn them a little bit so that each one of them gets a little bit of the water on it. And of course, if you're going to make more than one pound of this, you'll multiply the sauce by proportionately. This is about enough sauce to cover one pound of tofu. Now you can make up your own flavorings and you can make a lot of really nice flavorings. This needs to boil for five minutes and after it boils, the water gets turned off and then the tofu slices need to soak in the water for about six hours. So you can just cover the water up and let it sit just at room temperature. And this allows the tofu to soak up more of the flavoring. I've got two different kinds of flavorings here for a kind of a smoky flavored tofu that ends up tasting a little bit like smoked turkey. In this pot, I've combined together one and a half cups of water again with a quarter cup of soy sauce. And I've put a tablespoon of liquid smoke seasoning, which can be bought in grocery stores, and about half a teaspoon of black pepper. As you can see, they soak up quite a bit of the sauce in comparison to your just freshly pressed tofus. Now in this one, I've made kind of a poultry tasting seasoning. So we have some tofu that is really the texture, really resembles the texture closely of a white chicken meat. And it'll also have the flavor. And to make this poultry seasoned one, I've just taken the one and a half cups of water and the quarter cup of soy sauce, and I've added three tablespoons of nutritional yeast to it, along with two teaspoons of poultry seasoning, which you can buy in the grocery store, and a half a teaspoon each of thyme, summer savory, and asafoetida. Of course, if you don't have or can't find asafoetida, you can always use some onion powder. And of course, I've added about a quarter teaspoon of black pepper to this. Now remember, these have been soaking for about six hours. And this needs to soak for about six hours, too. Now after they've soaked for six hours, they need to be baked in the oven at about 250 degrees for between two or three hours. Now see what I mean? This is a long process, and this is why these tofu slices are often very expensive in grocery stores when you buy them. What the baking in the oven does is it just dries out a lot of the excess moisture from your pressed tofu cakes. And this is what they look like when they're done. As you can see, they're nice and dry. And if I cut one open for you, you can see they're also nice and firm compared to your very soft piece of tofu that you started out with. Now, not only have you changed by pressing the tofu, not only have you changed the texture of it, but you've also changed the nutritional value. This pressed tofu, like I mentioned before, contains 22% protein by weight compared to the regular tofu, which is usually between 8 and 11% protein by weight. And of course, whenever we're talking about protein, it's important to talk about calcium, because recent medical studies have shown that if you get too much protein in your diet, it will actually leach calcium out of your bones. Now, regular tofu in its wet store-bought form contains about 146 milligrams of calcium. That's per 100 gram weight, by the way. And the same 100 gram weight of pressed tofu contains 377 grams of calcium. And it's really very interesting because this is even a better calcium source as well as protein source than milk or any of your milk or dairy products.
As a matter of fact, I was real surprised to find out that milk contains, because we usually think of milk as being a very good calcium source, milk contains about 230 milligrams of calcium per 100 gram weight. But when milk is made into a harder form, just as we made the tofu into a harder form, it actually loses calcium. And that was what was surprising. Cottage cheese contains only 135 milligrams of calcium. And regular cheese contains only about 204 milligrams of calcium. So somehow, probably through the whey, a lot of calcium is lost when you make cheese out of milk but not when you make cheese out of tofu. Now this tofu cheese can be used in a lot of different ways. As you can see, as I'm slicing it here, it very, very closely resembles the texture of white chicken meat. And therefore it can be used in just about any recipe you want to replace chicken. Of course, the way you season the tofu is very important because plain tofu and plain pressed tofu is just a real, real bland, flavor, flavorless thing. Now you can slice your pressed tofu like this in just real thin slices and use it almost like little slices of white chicken meat on a dinner plate, for example can serve it with mashed potatoes and a little bit of steamed vegetables with a brown gravy on it. And it really does taste a lot like chicken or turkey. And you get the nice taste and the texture as well. Now these pressed tofu slices can also be cut like this. This is a little bit harder just because you're cutting across the width of it, or across the width of it. But if you cut them into real thin slices like this, you can make little cutlets and do all kinds of things with them. One real, <laughs> see what I mean by it's a little hard? <laughs> One thing that we like to do at our house that makes it a real fast, easy kind of food is use it as a cutlet in sandwiches. They also are delicious cut like this to make little cold plates as well. You can just make, put them in whole grain sandwiches and of course using the whole grain along with the tofu balances out the amino acid content and gives you a complete protein. And you can use them with a, an array of fresh vegetables and if you like you can use a little cheese in your sandwiches as well. Now another way that the, these can be cut, of course you can use your imagination, but these are the most common ways that I use them in my kitchen, is to cut little matchsticks. And you just cut them, cut your little cutlets again and stack them on top of each other and make very thin matchsticks. These are, this is so nice to work with because the texture is so firm. It doesn't crumble and it doesn't fall apart. Now the Chinese use little matchsticks like this that are cut in stir fries a lot. And because it is a very condensed form of protein, you don't want to use a lot of it. You just need a tiny bit almost as a garnish for the food. So you can cut them into little matchsticks like this and either use it in a stir fry, just your basic Chinese stir fry, or you can use it in salads like this. Just cut them up and make your favorite tossed salad and throw the matchsticks on top. Then you have a nice refreshing salad and it's got a lot of nice protein added to it in that form. Now one way that I use this pressed tofu is in a very special layered salad. 
And this is no ordinary salad. It's a real special one that you might want to save for special occasions and actually can be served as a main dish in itself because it can contain so much, as you'll see. I start off with a glass bowl. I like to use glass because it's such a pretty salad. It's layered, and it's really nice to be able to see the different colors in the layers. I start off with a glass bowl that will hold about a gallon. You want to have one that will hold at least a gallon or possibly a little bit more so you have a little breathing space there. And for the first layer, I put in the bottom of the bowl four cups of chopped romaine lettuce. And I'm, I've found it's really important to use the romaine lettuce as opposed to any other kind because it wilts much less uh, easily and quickly than your other forms of lettuce do. And on top of this chopped romaine lettuce, I'm going to add four scallions, or green onions, that have been cut. And when I say four scallions, I mean from just above the root to not quite the tip of the green. So this gets sprinkled in as the next layer in the salad. And on top of the four scallions, we add a layer of tomatoes. And I've used about four average-sized tomatoes to go in on top of there. And then on top of these tomatoes, I'm going to add an item that is a real specialty item. But I said this is a very special salad. This is something that you can find usually only in either gourmet stores or your Italian grocery markets. And these are sun-dried tomatoes that are packed in oil. This is basically half of the tomato. As you can see, there's the seed in there, and it's been cut in half. And they just dry them out in the sun and then pack them in some olive oil. And I need the equivalent of four tomatoes, which is about eight halves here. And I just cut them like this into matchsticks. As you can see, they're really quite tough. They add a really nice texture to the salad, as well as a really nice flavor. They just get cut into matchsticks. And then we'll sprinkle this on top of the undried tomatoes, <laughs> just like this. We just want little strips in there so everyone gets a little piece every here and there in their salad. Try to spread each of the layers out pretty evenly. Now, on top of that, I'm going to sprinkle half a teaspoon of black pepper. And on top of the black pepper goes this cupful of fresh basil leaves that have been cut into little slivers. As you can see, the, I just slivered the basil leaves just as I did the sun-dried tomatoes. And this cup was not packed. It was just gently put in there. And on top of that goes another kind of gourmet item. You can use other cheese in place of this. But this is a really interesting cheese, and it really adds a lot to the salad. I've, I'm using about 3 quarters pound of smoked mozzarella cheese. This is a cheese that either is imported from Italy, and there are some places. I was introduced to this cheese first in New York by some friends, and they actually got it locally smoked. But you just cut your smoked cheese into very thin slices like that and lay out a layer. The smoked cheese makes just a real nice kind of hors d'oeuvre, too, just to serve by itself as an appetizer. When it's sitting at room temperature, it tastes a lot like smoked turkey. It's really amazing. But anyway, so we lay out a layer of the smoked cheese. And on top of that, I'm going to put two cups of alfalfa sprouts. This, this 
goes out across nice and thick. And on top of that, half of a cup of Greek olives that have been pitted, of course, <laughs> and just cut into slices. These are rather salty, briny olives, but you might want to use your regular olives instead. Now on top of this, I'm going to add a layer of uh, things that I have to mix together, made out of one cup of mashed tofu, two scallions that are slivered, three tablespoons of nutritional yeast, two tablespoons of soy sauce, and a half a teaspoon of black pepper. Those ingredients just get mixed together in a bowl. The nutritional yeast and the soy sauce and a little bit of black pepper. And they just get mixed together so they kind of resemble a deviled egg almost. And then this layer gets spread out on top of all of this in here. And just try to spread it out as evenly as you can. Because it's wet, it might be a little difficult. <laughs> there we go. And on top of that goes one bell pepper, which has been cut crosswise into rings, and half a cup of watercress leaves. Not the stems, just pick the leaves off of the watercress. And on top of that, six ounces of your marinated artichoke hearts that have been cut up a tiny bit smaller than they actually are in the jar. You can see this is a real marathon salad and makes a wonderful party dish. And on top of all of that, I'm going to put four cups of steamed cauliflower, which have already been cooked and cooled off. And now all of this gets topped off with a dressing that's made with two cups of cooked garbanzo beans chopped fine, one third cup of parsley leaves chopped fine, one and a half cups eggless mayonnaise, half a cup of chopped celery, and a quarter cup each of low fat yogurt, sweet pickle relish, and nutritional yeast, two tablespoons of soy sauce, one tablespoon of Dijon mustard, one teaspoon of kelp, one teaspoon of spike, and a quarter teaspoon each of black pepper and asafoetida. Those all get mixed together to make a really delicious and nutritious dressing. But before I put the dressing on, I'm going to add the sliced tofu. This is the pressed tofu, and this is about three cubes of it chopped into fine matchsticks. You can put that anywhere in the salad, in any layer, really. And then just top it off with this nice dressing. Spread it out cover it, and then refrigerate it for about six hours. Now, we don't have six hours together, so I've got one here that's already been chilled and decorated on top, so it makes a beautiful presentation. These are all wonderful foods that you can make using the pressed tofu. And I'd like to leave you with these recipes, as well as this food for thought. The Buddha said, the fool who knows he is a fool is that much wiser. The fool who thinks he is wise is a fool indeed. The first step towards attaining wisdom begins with recognizing one's own lack of it.